Hey everyone, Professor Davis here, welcoming you to a brief discussion on the chirality of a very unusual class of compounds called cumulated dienes. Uh, before we jump into looking at cumulated diene structure specifically, I want to remind you about a few things regarding uh, atomic p orbitals and molecular pi bonds. The first is that p orbitals within a single atom are all oriented at 90 degrees to one another. So they look something like this, in which all of the orbitals have a 90 degree angle, so they're all at a right angle to one another. The next reminder I'd like to give you is that pi bonds can only form when you combine unhybridized p orbitals into pi molecular orbitals. When this is done, the new pi bond forms not on the axis between the two nuclei, but rather wrapping around it, as is depicted below. And finally, I'd like to remind you that these pi bonds, because of their arrangement here, have restricted rotation. And so they cannot form when those p orbitals are orthogonal to one another, like they are in the example down here on the right. So pi bonding can only occur when the appropriate alignment of p orbitals is available. So now that we've reviewed uh, pi bonding and p orbitals, we're ready to take a look at the simplest of all cumulated dienes. This is a molecule known as propadiene. Notice that the carbon in the center has a pi bond to each of its neighbors on both sides. So if I were to draw this molecule in a three-dimensional rendering, it would probably look something like this. And you may ask yourself, how is it possible that a molecule which is apparently flat could possibly be chiral? And in order to answer this question, we're going to have to turn this molecule on its side and take a look at the molecular orbitals which would exist if it were, in fact, in this configuration. As we look along the molecule from the edge, and we attempt to construct two pi bonds to the central atom, we should immediately notice a problem. Although one pi bond is capable of forming, in this case as depicted on the right, the other pi bond on the left-hand side cannot form because the associated p atomic orbitals are oriented 90 degrees from one another. The only way to remedy this situation is to rotate the carbon-carbon bond on the left side of this representation. By doing so, we create a situation in which those p orbitals are aligned as well. However, we've also altered the dihedral angle between two hydrogens on either side of this molecule. So we've created a true representation of what propadiene looks like. If we think about the central three carbon atoms as a single rigid structure, we can begin to see how this molecule may in fact have chirality depending upon the substituents. Let's rotate it end on and take a closer look at how they're oriented. Now it should be abundantly clear. As we sight along the three carbons which are bonded together, we see a structure which looks remarkably similar to that of all our other examples containing tetrahedral centers. If instead of all hydrogens, as in propadiene, we instead have four distinct substituents attached to our central carbon skeleton, it should be easy to see now that two different enantiomeric arrangements are possible. In this example, I've colored them red, blue, yellow, and green, and oriented them in such a way that red and blue do not overlap. And any attempt to rectify this by rotation will place the other side out of alignment. So these are, in fact, non-superimposable mirror images, the very definition of enantiomers. And this is why accumulated dienes can and often do have chirality.